All right, so I think it's all exam three. I haven't, I haven't verified that, but let's look. So this is spring 2021, and when you're looking at exam three, you're looking at those multiple choice questions, which are usually going to be the end of the exam. So like, for example, here on spring 21, that would pick up in number 14 and then go to the end. So number 14 to the end for spring 21. For spring 23, or spring 20, exam three, that would be... Uh, number 18 to the end, so that was actually all multiple choice, so 18 through 20, 20, uh, 28, 20, and not including 29, so 18 through 28 on spring 20. Notice there are two versions, oh wait, no, that's not two versions, never mind. I realized that uh, on a previous quiz that I'd used a question that was from a different version of an exam that's not on here. So I, I verified that all the questions are from these particular exams. Y'all did well on that question, so I didn't really make a big deal out of it. Uh, the spring 19 is, this is still exam three. Uh, what's that? 15 through 20, 15 through 20. That's uh, spring 19. Spring 18 is exam three. That would be 17 through 28. Yeah, 17 through 28. Actually, no, 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 I'm sorry. Not 17 through 28. Um, 17 through 24. 17 through 24, because you see, on this one, we, when we get to 25, this picks up in chapter 7. So if you write this down, that 17 through 24 for spring uh, 18. And then spring 17, which is the last one that I, that I use, is uh, 17 through 20. 17 through 23. Okay, that's spring 17. Isn't that right? Isn't that five years? 17, 18, 19, 20? Yeah, that's five years. Okay, not that many questions, right? Like, how many questions is that? Did y'all write those down? Um, 20 something, yeah. I mean, you could probably just memorize 20 something questions. Not that hard. Right? I want the highest average that I have. So let's just look at the different classes of questions. Are there any particular questions? I want to go through the different types of questions that you'll see, because you'll see one or more of every kind, because I have nine questions and then a gimme question. Uh, and so, you know, there are only a few topics, so you'll see more than one probably. Um, okay, go ahead. For the critical angle and then like the total internal reflection. Sure. I get the passes, so mm -hmm. that's why. Yeah, let's look at these questions. This is uh, spring spring twenty one, so last year's exam. Um, exam three. And number nineteen and twenty are all about critical angle. So critical angle occurs, theta C, which is the critical angle, occurs when the incident angle, I'll call that theta 1, is equal to 90 degrees. Or rather, I'm sorry, not theta 1, the refracted angle is equal to 90 degrees. So if I see right here I have this incident ray, my critical angle is going to occur when the refracted angle is 90 degrees. And so this ray right here would have an angle of 90 degrees, right? If this is my perpendicular line, that's a 90 degree angle. So I want to figure out what is this incident angle when this angle is equal to 90 degrees. Now sine of 90 is equal to 1. So when I write this equation, it would be n1 sine of theta 1 is equal to n2 times uh, sine of theta 2. That would be n1 sine of theta c because that theta 1 becomes my critical angle 
is equal to n2 sine of 90 is just equal to 1. So I'm just going to leave that off. So here I'm looking for theta 1, which is the critical angle. Uh, theta 1 then, or theta c, would be the inverse sine of n2 over n1. You see what I did there to get that? I, I divided both sides by n1, so I get n2 over n1, and then I take the inverse sine of that. And then when I do that, the inverse sine of uh, 1 over 1 1.4 I get uh, 46 degrees. Make sure you're in degree mode, not radian. So 46 degrees is the right answer. Now, sometimes you might get a, uh, an error message because if I'm going then from a low index to a high index, the... Hey, I'll take my picture. No, thank you for that. Oh, okay. <laughs> I knew you weren't taking my picture. I'm not that vain. Uh, anyway, if I'm moving from a low index to a high index, notice that the light ray would not bend towards the medium, it would bend towards the normal. In that case, you would not get total internal reflection. If I was moving from a low index to a high index, here I'm moving from a high index to a low index, so that light ray will always bend away from the normal, but if I'm bending towards the normal, that's when I don't get any uh, total internal reflection at all because it's bending the wrong way. Uh, and you'll know that in your calculator if you get an error. So if you get an error, just stop and think, hey, am I going from a low index to a high index of refraction? And if I am, there's no total internal reflection that occur at all. And that question, like that idea also comes here, that I have this fiber optic ray, right, a fiber optic cable rather, and it's surrounded by this like protective material just to protect the glass from getting nicks in it, or plastic or whatever it is, from getting nicked as glass, but from getting nicks in it. But this cladding has to have a lower index of refraction than the core, so that I get total internal reflection. Um, so that's what it's asking here, that the cladding has to have a lower index of refraction than the core. So C would be, be that answer. For total internal reflection, this index has to be smaller than that index. Okay? Uh, that, cool. All right. You're going to see a question like number 16. There's one of those on every test, so just practice those. But there are two things that you need to... Yeah, thanks. Now, the total internal reflection is, you know, I have this beam of light, and I want to keep it inside of this material. Like, we use this for fiber optic cables, because with a fiber optic cable, you send a pulse of light into it, and it'll go for, you know, hundreds, thousands of miles with basically no attenuation. So it's a very nice way to send data at high transmission rates, because you don't get any loss of the, the intensity of the light. It's all, in, it's all inside of that material. So I want this beam of light to not go into this next medium. That might have been what you were asking. Huh? Yeah, I don't want it to bend this way. I want it to bend this way. Actually, what's really happening is that that light ray will actually have a shallower incident angle, and so it's going to bend like that. It's actually not going to bend at all. It'll reflect off the inside of the cable. But there is a minimum angle, theta 1, that's required for total internal reflection. Okay? Because if, if you make this angle too small, then you want, it'll just go through, and you don't want it to go through. Okay? All right. Um, so you'll have one like number 16. Two things you need to recognize is, first of all, these two angles are equal. And then this angle with the perpendicular, so if this angle is 40, that means that this angle is 90 minus 40, or 50 degrees. And then recognize that I have a right triangle that has a total of 180 degrees. Or you could just say that this angle and this angle have to add up to equal to, you know, in this case, 90. But the sum of these three angles has to be 180. So I'll go and write 180 
minus 90 minus 50 what's that 40 degree 40 degrees so that angle is 40 degrees that means that this angle is 50 degrees which means that this angle is 50 degrees okay sorry my pen is not working right we need to fix this uh, you're going to have some questions about which way does light bend based on its index of refraction and how to do that. So like here, for example, I could ask several questions. Which of the following is true? Is N1 equal to bigger or less than N2? Well, I draw my rays. You might try to memorize these different situations, but I would recommend that you not do that. That instead you draw the wave fronts and think about how the light is moving. So I know that since it's bending the way that it is, that this is my fast side. It's moving fast on that side and slow on this side. Um, and if it's moving fast, that is that uh, V2 is bigger than V1. Sorry, y'all, it's pen. V2 is bigger than N V1. That means that N2 is less than N1. Okay, so N2, the answer would be B right here. It's traveling faster. That means it has a lower index of refraction. So you have a couple of questions like that. I can show you some others. They're in every test, so uh, just practice them all. You're going to have questions about the electromagnetic spectrum. One, probably one question about the electromagnetic spectrum. Uh, make sure that you can organize the different parts of the EM spectrum from by energy, wavelength, and frequency. So on one end, I have high energy. That's short wavelength or small wavelength and high frequency. On the other end, I have low energy. I have a uh, long wavelength, like radio waves have a very long wavelength. And then I have uh, small frequency. Okay, in the low energy, I have radio to microwave to infrared to visible, uh, and then on the high energy end of visible, I have what? Uh, ultraviolet, I guess X ray, and then gamma ray. Okay, so make, I think y'all know that. You've, you've had the EF spectrum. So first grade, right? Uh, the inspector first grade? Third grade? Fourth grade? Okay, you should have had it a long time ago, but uh, if you know, let's make sure you know the way that the EM spectrum is ordered. Okay? And then also, you need to know the, the different history of light. There were four people that you need to know. Each of them saw light as either a particle or a wave. You need to know which that is, and then by what physical property of light did they think that light was a particle or a wave? So Newton, um, Huygens, Young, and Einstein. Newton thought that light was a particle. Huygens thought that light was a wave. Uh, there's Huygens' name right there if you want to write it down. Young, like my name, he thought that light was a wave. And then Einstein, of course, you know Einstein, he thought that light was a particle. And actually, by that point, everybody knew that light was a wave, but he also showed that light was a particle. That's, he won the Nobel Prize for that. Not for his theory of relativity, but he won it for this, for the describing um, light as a particle. So Newton thought that light was a particle because of reflection. Uh, Huygens thought reflection. Huygens thought that light was a wave because of refraction. Refraction is a wave phenomena. Young thought that um, that light was a wave because of um, interference or diffraction. I think I usually say interference, but diffraction would be an okay word too. Uh, and then Einstein. Oh gosh. What is it? The word just escaped me. Come on. Help me out. I forget. It's in your notes. Huh? It's a 
embarrassing. I'm sorry, it's been a long day. Never mind, you didn't need to know that. Let's see, it's on a different test, I'll look and see. Photoelectric effect, yes, thank you, photoelectric effect. Uh, so, all right, make sure you know all four of those. The people, why they thought that light was a particle or a wave, and then did they think that it was a particle or a wave. So, Newton, what did he think? Why? Reflection, like a billiards ball, right? Huygens, who was a contemporary of Newton, thought it was a wave because of refraction. Young, who came about 100 years later, he thought that light was a wave because of that's when you get two waves that come together they add up to make a bigger wave and then uh einstein thought that it was a particle because of the photoelectric effect okay you good all right uh let's see what else we have this history thing see this is all the same you're going to have a question like number 22 where you just have to use the law of refraction these aren't terribly difficult so I have, I just need to know the equation. Of course, you'll have it on the equation sheet. It, no, this, I moved on to a different exam, I think. Yeah, this is spring 20. So N1 sine theta 1. Equals N2 sine theta 2. I need to write in cursive. Can y'all read that at all? No? Are you serious? It's not me, it's the pen. The pen is not working right. It's like, if I pick it up, it doesn't work right. Okay, so N1 sine theta 1. N1 is uh, the incident. Uh, it's incident in air. The incident, the uh, index of refraction for air is 1 times sine of 30. is equal to N2, that's what I'm looking for, times sine of 21. And so I solved that for N2. That's going to be uh, sine 30 divided by sine of 21. Uh, 1.4, 1.395 or 1.4. Okay, make sure you go through and practice those just to make sure that you know how to do it in your calculator. They're not that hard, but just do it once at least before the quiz. Here's another reflection problem. If this is 50, this is what? 50 and this angle is... 40, right? 90 minus 50. If this is 40, that's 120. That means this has to be 20 degrees, right? 40 plus 120, that's 160. So I got 20 more degrees over here. That means this angle is 70, so this angle is also 70. You have a question like that. I shouldn't, like really, all these questions are pretty much the same. Uh, oh, here's one that's a little bit different, where uh, I ask which color will be refracted the most. This is how um, prisms work, that you can separate light by its wavelength in a prism, the one with the higher index of refraction is going to bend more. So then if I'm looking for the color, I'm looking for the one with the, the shortest wavelength. And the shortest wavelength, so let's see, it's Roy G. Biv. Biv has the shortest wavelength. That's the high energy end, so I'm looking at, at blue. Biv is blue. The violet, that's the curve as well. Say again. So an increase in index of refraction is going to be shorter. Yeah, but I'm not, you don't need to know that. Like, I would give you this graph. I'm going to give you this question, right? I don't expect you to know that glass has a higher index of refraction or shorter wavelength. I would give you this graph, but I want you to be able to interpret this graph and say, oh, this light, which is this wavelength, which is red light, which, excuse me, which is blue light, 
would bend more than the light here, which is red light. So more like, you know, which one, which Yeah, you need to know that, uh, that this is red and this is blue, right? Because it's uh, this is the low energy, this is the high energy, and so it goes from low to high energy backwards on this axis. And then also realize that as n increases, then this light will bend more. So blue light will bend more, and red light will bend less. That's why you're able to separate it because you know you get the blue light going over here and the red light going here in a prism. Uh, number 24, we did one like this, but this one's a little bit different where I ask you to rank the media from highest to lowest index of refraction. All right, so draw my wave fronts. They go like that. When I get here, this side goes fast, and this side continues going slow. So I already know that N2 is less than n1. Okay? Uh, then I can look at the medium 2 to medium 3. Uh, at this side, what's it going to do there? It's going to slow down. And here it's going to be going faster. So that tells me that if it slows down, that means that n3 is what? Bigger or smaller than n2? Is traveling slower and index 3. So does that mean that index 3 is bigger or smaller than index 2? Bigger is right. N3, right, is bigger than N2. So I should have, uh, I'm going from highest to lowest. I have N3 is bigger than N2, but N2 is less than N1. Now, I don't know if 1 goes, um, N2 is less than 1. I don't know if N1 goes here or does it go here. I know that it's less than N1. I'm going from, wait, no, I'm sorry, uh, what did I say? N2 is less than N1. Uh, let's just go ahead and do this. So, I want to know, let's imagine that I have medium 1 right here and medium 3. If I redraw these waves like this, they'll look like this. So what I've done is I basically just pushed medium 2 out of the way and squished these two down together. And I redraw this light wave and this light ray. This ray and this one. And that's what I've done over here. And then I can ask how do medium 1 and medium 3 compare? So I have my wave fronts coming in here. What's it do there when it enters into medium 3? Speed up or slow down? slow down. So V3 is less than V1. It slows down. That means that N3 is bigger or smaller than N1? Bigger. Okay, so uh, N3 is bigger than N1. N3 is also bigger than N2. So um, 3, 1, 2. I can take those three inequalities N3 is bigger than N2. N3 is also bigger than N1. So it's the biggest one of all. So I'm going to put it here in this position. Uh, N1 is bigger than N2. So I can put that right here. And then uh, that's all I need. Yeah. And then N2 comes last. So 3, 1, 2 is the right answer. Probably going to have a question like that. I would go through and work all of them. There are several. But since I only have a handful of questions, I'm pretty sure you'll have one like that. Also, there are some questions that rank the speed of light. So uh, you could think about how does V2 compare to V1? How does V3 compare to V2? This inequality, by the way, would switch. So V2 would be more than V1. V3 would be less than V2. Okay, because N and V are inversely related. Okay? Go through and practice those. You'll be fine if you just practice. Really, the quiz is not meant to be difficult. It's just meant to be to get you to study, to study those old tests and help prepare you for the exam. Because on the exam, you'll really need to know how to do it. Like right now, I really just want recall, that you can recall these questions if you've worked before.
for. That's really the goal for the quiz. I'd love for you to just understand it, but if you just recall it, that's fine too. Okay? If you see any magnetic fields, it looks like in some of the exams I had some magnetic fields pushed down to the end. You won't see any of that. Okay, uh, let's see. Any other particular questions? Can y'all answer me this number 17? Where does light travel faster, in one or in two? And one is right. Very good. The light comes along here. It hits right here and it slows down. That means it turns and goes in this direction. Okay? In one, it travels faster. Which one has a bigger index? In two. Yeah, look at y'all. You're awesome at that. Those are probably the hardest questions. Uh, here's one where you're number 18, where you're just finding the index of a fraction. That's just using n1 sine theta 1. Number 19 is a little bit different. Here I want to know the speed of light. I give you all these equations, but remember the index of a fraction is equal to um, C, that's the speed of light, divided by V. I give you the speed of light. It's 3 times 10 to the 8th. It's in the little constants section. Mm, it's killing me. Uh, divided by the index of a fraction. Uh, let's see, I'm looking for V. So divided by V. So I have 1.33 equals 3. divided by V. And then you solve that for V. That's going to be about 2 point something. 2.26, I guess. Okay? Solving that for V. Okay? Y'all can do that? We've done that before in class. I would expect a question like that, too. And then let's just sort of go through these. Y'all holler out if you see any that you want to work. But I think that we've worked all of the different types of questions. Uh, there's ordering them, that's energy, here's the people, Here, one like this, we just did that one, this is a reflection, I think we're okay on that, but y'all holler out, okay, you want me to look at one, yeah, hope. Spring 20, sure. I'd written on that. Okay, let me erase this. What must be the okay? Yeah. So what must be the incident angle for total internal reflection to occur? So um, light is traveling from glass to air. So the first thing I wanted to do is just make sure that total internal reflection will occur. It's moving from glass to air. Uh, air has an index of refraction of one. I don't give you that, but I expect you to know it. That air is basically a vacuum, or the same as a vacuum, so the index is 1. Uh, it's 1.5 for glass, so I'm moving from a high index to a low index. Can I get total internal reflection if I move from a high index to a low index? Well, to think about that, I need to make sure that it bends away from the normal. So really that question is asking, when it moves in this direction, will it move away from the normal? Will it? Well, if I imagine my wave front, boom, 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 is it going to bend in that direction? It will, because it's moving faster in the air, and so it's going to bend like that. So I can get total internal reflection. Uh, that is, that I want to know what is the angle when it's like that. So um, I'm looking for... This angle, this angle is 90 degrees. So now the equation for this would be N1, that's 1.5, sine of theta 1. is equal to N2, that's 1, times sine of 90. And I'm not even going to write that, because sine of 90 is equal to 1. Right. And so now I would do the inverse sine of 1 over 1.5. Okay. 
then I get 42 degrees. So D is the right answer for this one. That's a good question. You're going to have a question like this for sure. Okay, 42 degrees. Notice that if I try doing the inverse sine of, what, 1.5 divided by 1, I get a domain error. That, that doesn't, or you, whatever your calculator says when it doesn't compute. Because the total and total question just doesn't occur in that case. Okay, good question. Is that clear? Other questions? Let's just... Let's take a look at the last of these, just to make sure I'm not skipping over any that might be uh, different. Really want a good showing. We did these. Look at that. There's the critical angle. That's just like the one we just did. Uh-huh. Can I say here? Number 27, I told y'all this, you're not going to see that on the quiz. And then these others, I've already given y'all those numbers. Number 17, is that what you said? Uh, 23. 23. Okay, so we did one similar to this earlier. And this, the figure looked a little bit different. I have a light ray that comes in, and then it enters into this core and will travel down the core by total internal reflection. And I just want to know what must be the difference between the, the core and the cladding in their index of refraction. So if I'm drawing a simpler figure, my core would be here. And I want, I want my light ray to come up like this. And then it's going to have total internal reflection like that. So what must be the relationship between N1 and N2 for that to be the case? Because I have my core here and my cladding here. Uh, is this going to have a bigger or smaller index of refraction? Smaller is right. So uh, N2 should be less than N1. Uh, N1 is greater than N2, so A would be the right answer. Okay? Seventeen is the last year, right, that we have. Um, let's just, we didn't look at eighteen, so let's just take a quick look. I remember these things about mirrors are not going to be on there. Um, here, this is a similar question. It's just worded differently about which is the cladding or the, the surroundings. This is, oh, this is a, uh, a question about the time that it takes just remember this basic kinematics qu uh, equation that V is equal to D divided by T, distance over time, and then you can solve for the time. Uh, you have to calculate the velocity as well here. So uh, the speed of light is equal to C divided by N. So in this case, um, C is 3 times 10 to the 8 divided by my index of refraction, which is 1.5. I'm going to have 2 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Okay? So that's not a hard problem, but just make sure that you work through it before you come to the quiz. Is that clear on this? Yeah, clear. That's a little bit different. Uh, these are, I think these are all similar to ones we've done. But y'all holler if you want me to look at them. Uh, yeah, I think these are all very similar. And we did these. We looked at these already. Okay. Unless y'all have particular questions, but I think I'm, I'm done. So y'all have particular questions. You feel comfortable about the quiz? Yeah. I love it. Like I said, some of you already have all 100. Okay, y'all can go if you want, but I'm going to do this last question. Uh, 2009, yeah. nobody came in late, right? I got everybody, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 
Yeah, I got everybody. Uh, let me pull that exam up. So 2009, exam three. It's probably exam two, yeah. No, you have a number. This one right here. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you're not going to see this question, but there was that question that we uh, just showed you. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's just how much more time. Okay. Not on the quiz. So like the quiz question comes directly from the exam. So I would not I don't change them in any way. I just copy them. Okay. Okay. But on the exam, I'm sure. Yeah. Okay. Have a great day. Good to see y'all. Thanks for coming. So I wrote the pen. I'm gonna go put in an IT order to fix it.